Hey coaches, this is Coach Randy with Radius Athletics. Let's talk basketball. Today I want to talk a little bit about practice planning and go over a typical practice planning script that um, served as a template for the teams I coached and that I thought through years of trial and error um, really worked for creating the type of practices we wanted to have. And by the type of practices we wanted to have, I meant that I wanted the practices to be 100% connected to how we play. Um, I really tried to eliminate fluff and eliminate the idea of like, oh, that's a really good drill. I saw a great coach teach it or I saw it at this awesome clinic. I'm going to do that with my kids. Um, that, that mindset sort of seems like a road to nowhere to me and... The reason I, uh, I wanted to really refine things was to put things down on paper and only keep things down in my drill library that 100% connected to how we wanted to play. Um, I also wanted to limit unopposed drills, meaning there's no defense. With no defense, there's no decision. With no, with no defense, there's no read. And... And that's sort of how I wanted our teams to play and how I wanted kids to learn the game was to be able to make decisions. And you make decisions based on defenders or, or you make defensive decisions based on offensive players. So um, I really limited unopposed drills. And it doesn't mean I didn't use them. And you'll see here on this practice plan in front of us that there were certainly times that I did. And I wanted to limit them to introductory Concepts meaning I'm introducing a new concept. Um, they've never the, the kids have never been taught this before. We're gonna we're gonna practice it on air, and after that introductory phase, we we pretty much did our same drills on that we did that we learned on air uh, with a defender and live. Um, another kind of time I used unopposed drills would be just when I wanted some volume. Uh, particularly having to do with shooting and footwork, just to kind of um, refine those things, refine the techniques of footwork and shooting as they pertain to the cuts and screens and, and movement in our offense. So you will see in some of these practice plans a, a, a lot of um, on-o work that was basically our shooting drills that were done unopposed because we just wanted to zone in on on footwork and technique and get lots of volumes of shots up but keep those to the minimum and keep them early in the practice and that's sort of how I I, um, I worked in unopposed drills I also wanted to eliminate drills that were you know, sort of done out of basketball coaching tradition, meaning, you know, this is the way my coach did it. This is what I see every other coach do it. So you got to run this drill every day to be a good team. I wanted to question sort of that that mindset and, and think of, well, there's only so many things that I feel like our team can be good at. We have, we have uh, a ceiling on the amount of time we have to work with our team. So if those drills, even if they're good, and even if a highly renowned coach demonstrated them or ran them, that, that doesn't mean they connect with what we were trying to get done. So I struck them from my drill library. I wanted to eliminate our practices uh, of what I call tie your shoes drills. And by that, I mean, I tie my shoes the same way I did right now. I tie my shoes the same way right now as I did when I was 10 years old. I'm not any better at it or any worse at it, and I've been doing it every day. So I think there are drills that coaches sometimes do that are that are tie your shoe drills. You 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 feel like you got to do them every day, but doing them every day isn't giving any sort of improvement to the athletes and and. If, if I didn't tie my shoes for 10 days in a row, I'm still going to know how to tie my shoes um, after those 10 days. So 
I wanted to eliminate tie your shoes drills and and focus in on things that I thought really really helped our helped our team. And for me, that was sort of finding drills that taught these three things. One, our transition offense. I wanted that to be early in practice. A lot of those drills can be sort of hidden conditioning drills. And two, motion offense and reading the defense was very important. So that was done through a lot of technique when we went unopposed and a lot of live sessions. And three, pressure man-to-man. And with that, I typically uh, taught our man-to-man principles just prior to the season, just prior to, um, you know, our, our extended practice time and put in our man-to-man rules and principles in, in, a, in a traditional, quote-unquote, defensive drill type style. And then we hardly ever revisited traditional defensive drills. Everything then was kind of coached through the live sessions. So let's do this. Let's start exploring this practice plan and go through. We'll go through line by line and and quickly kind of get a sense of 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 what what a typical day for a motion offense team and and a team running this sort of transition motion offense pressure man to man defense. What a typical day in their life would look like. So first of all, up 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 at the top of the practice plan, I always wrote in the date and the practice number. So I could refer back to it year to year and and kind of see where we are on the timeline year to year. Um, I always had a pre-practice drill. Um, Usually these were things that a player could do by themselves or at the very least with a partner. And a lot of times the introductory motion offense drills were uh, a a good tool to use during pre-practice. Sometimes it might be free throws. Uh, sometimes it might be, um, you know, just sort of a review of something we've done the day before. Here on this practice plan, I had I have one on o chair drills, meaning I'm going to have the chair drills or the chairs set up to kind of mimic the role of screeners. I want players to partner up and work on the basic cuts of motion offense, curls, back cuts, straight cuts, and out cuts coming off those chairs. So they've got a passer and a part and a and a cutter working. Just getting up shots coming off the chairs. And this is done in the time, you know, sort of as players sort of trickle out of the locker room into the practice setting before we sort of officially start practice. What I didn't want was just a whole bunch of silliness going on in the gym prior to practice. Um, You come out, you get in the locker room, you get your practice gear on, you get on the court, and you've got something specific to be working on even before we start practice. So after that, we would go to dynamic warm-up, which typically consists of doing some footwork drills like ladder and cone drills just to work on foot quickness, agility, uh, foot speed, uh, being able to turn over our feet quicker and and cut and move laterally quicker. Uh, So we just had all kinds of ladder and, and cone drills that you might see like a strength and conditioning coach do with a player. That was kind of how we started practice. Typically, real quick, high intensity, two, three minutes, and then get right into our dynamic stretching, which we would get in five lines across the baseline. We would do a certain exercise from the baseline to the half court line, like knee pulls or mummy kicks or butt kicks or lateral lunges or a lunge twist or something like that. We would do that from the baseline to the half court line and then jog to the other end and do the next exercise coming back five lines at a time. Um so that 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 got us to through you know pre practice and warm up and then we would split into position groups, typically guards and posts. Sometimes this would look in look like a, a split squad where we would have um, some guards on one end, some posts on one end. But most days it was split in guards and posts. And here you see on this particular day, I've got some unimp- unopposed work going on. Uh, for down screens and shallow cuts with a uh, two on O, so we've got a screener and a cutter, um, and we're working on screening angles, shallow cuts, tempos of taking the screen to the cutter, um, and getting up shots coming off the screen specific um, specific to our offense. Um, 
you know, let's make the assumption here in this practice plan that this may be early in the season and these concepts are fairly new, so we're just learning those and getting up reps two on O. With the post, we've got just typical post work. Work the U drill where we're working on, you know, posting as, as post defenders sort of pressure us over one shoulder or the other. We're working the U, that, that sort of semicircle post up area. Uh, we would work on, you know, something like setting up cross screens and duck ins with our posts. So um, we typically went warm up, position breakdown, and then thirdly into transition period. In this transition period, it could be all kinds of things um, that related to our uh, primary fast break and getting getting the ball inbounded, outletted, and up the court as quick as possible. So, like a rim run drill, where we're really working on the conditioning of our of our post to really drive home our desire to have to have posts that will run the lifeline, run from rim to rim, hard in transition. Um, as you can see, sometimes we use a blocking pad to, to, you know, outlet pitch ahead. The, the post run in the rim line, uh, slams into a coach or a manager or another player with a blocking pad and posts up strong on them. And we're looking to get catches in the paint and transition. Um, another drill we might use, uh, would be two and a half trips where we're going through kind of our whole transition offense cycle down down and back is a trip so we would go two down and backs and then another half of a trip where we would face a defense on that last half of a trip and sort of flow into our our motion offense off the break and work on on connecting the transition offense and and motion offense seamlessly here this would be something that's a little bit of a hidden conditioner as kind of players are getting up and down the court fast as they can um you know, under a clock where we're trying to get, you know, this two and a half trips done and in, in a certain time element to, to really push the tempo and, and create our identity of a, of a running team. After that, we might take a quick water break and then go into live session where here I always posted practice plans in the locker room on the gym wall where players could see it. I know there's benefits and drawbacks of each not posting or posting, but I always posted them because I wanted the I wanted players to look. Okay, look, Jones is telling Martin, hey, you're with me. Smith is telling Taylor, hey, we're, we're partners in this drill, um, and it kind of sped up the transition time and practice instead of me standing there going, okay, Jones, you're with Martin Smith, you're with Taylor, and they they kind of knew that. I expected leaders to kind of look at the practice plan. And get that done and cut down on the on the transition time lost in practice. That sort of time leakage is what gets you off schedule in practice. So typically at this point, it would look to most coaches that we're just working on our motion offense the rest of the practice. But really what we're working on is motion offense and defense. Because nothing from here on out is going to be unopposed. Everything is live with a defender, um, score being kept, wins being tracked not only for the day but for the week, for the year. So each team that gets a win, each individual on that team gets a win in their win chart column. And we're keeping track of winners and losers every day through these live drills. And typically we progress from two on two, three on three, to four on four. Um, As you can see here, on this particular day, we're going two on two with the coach. The players are are arranged in teams. The, the, you know, the Jones is his teammate. His or her teammate is Martin Smith. His or her teammate is Taylor. So, um, what I've done here to create these teams, I took some time during my practice planning to S curve my team, where you know Jones, Smith, Black, Johnson, Ellis, and Fredericks would be, you know. A players, if you will, and then, you know, with Jones, Smith, Black, Johnson, Ellis, and Fredericks going sort of in descending order, and then Paul, Jackson, Marcus, Dillard, Taylor, and Martin going sort of ascending order, so we, in theory, we match up six evenly matched teams, play two on two with a coach, you score, you stay. Um, We might use some of our motion offense restrictions here, 
where you've got to start with a flare screen, start with a dribble handoff, start with a, a, a shallow cut. Um, only um, you might, you know, just the tons of restrictions that we would use every day to, to emphasize certain aspects of the motion offense. So, for example, if, if uh, we, if the offense scores on an inside cut, a curl or a back cut, they're going to get a higher point value than scoring off, off an outside cut. Um, if we wanted to emphasize defense, we would use a defensive scoring method where a defensive rebound, a charge, uh, uh, creating a turnover gets you points rather than the offensive points you earn by making baskets. So um, tons of restrictions, tons of variety, tons of different scoring methods there. Typically at the end of, say, an eight-minute block, we would have one of these duos that had the most points. They went on and got themselves a water. And the other, the other ten players had a had a quick down and back, and and then they got water. And we always tag free throws with water breaks after kind of an intense eight, ten, twelve minute block, uh, and and you come back to the free throw line. Then we would progress to a three on three session, um, where we might have uh, a drill like three on three cutthroat. Three on three change, three on three guts, where we're using diff same idea of using different principles, different uh, different restrictions, different uh, point values or scoring systems from day to day to sort of emphasize the things we feel like were most important or that we need to work on at that time. Um, you can see I've got some restrictions listed here. Uh, we're going to start action with the cross screen. Curls and back cuts count double. Um, and we're going to go eight minutes, and during the last four minutes, we're going to use the restrictions. So the first four minutes would just be three on three. Typically in these groups, the, again, we S-curve them where, you know, this would be the A players, the B players, the C players. So every team is balanced and equal. And the competition is fierce because there is no number ones against number twos. It's, it's, it's equal throughout the whole practice. And uh, same flow, we're going to have a winning trio. They're going to have uh, the privilege of going to get their water break first while everyone else does a down and back or some sort of conditioning and then gets their water break and everyone comes back to the free throw line. Uh, and then we would go into like a four-player session where here I have shown like maybe um, it's early in the motion offense install process, so I have a four-on-two session where we're going uh, four on two with the screeners not guarded, the cutters guarded, and we're still kind of working on seeing some things in the basics of our motion offense as far as inside cuts and teaching the defense to play a certain way, um, probably scheduled in a time when the offense is sort of new and we're still phasing into just being able to play live four on four. And that would take that would sort of connect with the the four on four, where a drill like four on four change we could do this four on four cutthroat four on four guts four on four get back four on four uh, ping pong where we're going back and forth back and forth different groups of four um, working with two screeners and two cutters in every group again these groups are S curved A players B players C players D players where there's uh, two screeners, two cutters in each group. We're trying to maintain our four out shape through the possession, uh, passing, cutting, screening, reading the defense, working on staying too high, too wide, too spread apart, and um, playing with the, with uh, balance and spacing. And uh, most of these drills, like four on four change, four on four ping pong. They all sort of end up doing the same thing, just, you know, different transitions, different elements we're emphasizing, but they all sort of emphasize teaching on the offensive, through the offensive lens, reading the defense, spacing, balance. From the defensive end, we're working on denying passes, pressuring to checkpoints, helping each other through screens, talking, communicating. Typically, um, an assistant coach kind of served as a defensive coordinator, and I took the lead as a as the offensive coach. So, again, there would be a quartet here that is a winner, the winning quartet. 
the other ten, uh, you know, the other eight players would would have to do a little bit of conditioning if they weren't on the winning quartet. The these four get to go on and get their water break, come back to the free throw line, and typically that was the workflow of a of our typical practice. Um, at the bottom of the practice plan, you see a thought for the day where I might put like a motivational quote or some announcements or, you know, spring league or fall league schedule, get your money in for team t-shirts or shoes, things like that down here at the bottom. So um, we sort of went over those things and talked about those at the end of practice when we all came together on the, on the, uh, on the dot, the half court circle to sort of talk about thoughts for the day and reflect on practice and, and that sort of thing. So that's a typical practice plan that I used. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments and see, uh, see your scripts and see your ideas. And, and uh, hopefully some of these ideas will help you and help your team.